stories? What are they, one may ask? A more fitting question would be... What makes a good story? There's so many good pieces out there. And it's disappointing how many kids in our generation read nowadays. A good story, well, I guess primarily it needs to be unpredictable. In an attempt to keep the reader on your toes. Keep them, keep them ready. But then someone can argue against that. Hmm. It needs to have relatable characters. Well, not necessarily relatable, but flawed. If that's a better word. Doesn't matter, you didn't come here to hear my opinion on what an actual good story is. You came here to hear an actual story. What types of story? Well, I could tell you a dispute centuries ago, in which two soon-be lovers found themselves in the middle of... Never mind, it would probably be too predictable. Oh, I could tell you of two best friends who initially came to a new town to find work on a pursuit of an idealistic future, and uh, but soon will realize that moving to a new location doesn't mean that prosperity and luxuries can come without a price. Oh, Greek tragedy, or at least my interpretation of one. Okay, so let's begin in a city. No, wait, a business named Thebes, which is founded by a well-known praised individual who goes by the name of Oedipus. For a long time, Oedipus ensured his company's growth and kept it healthy rich, which caused it to soon expand to be passed by a worthy successor. Fortunately, Oedipus has children. Uh, two girls, Antigone and his many, and two boys, Eteocles and Polynesus. Oedipus's sons were to take turns sharing during the same amount of years after, however, when it came to the time to switch to happen, Ethiopia's denied Polynesia's his right. With support from the portion of people within the own business, Polynesia's brought hell and chaos to Phoebe's, and Ethiopia's had no choice but to defend his role in their father's prize building. Face to face in matchless rage, mirroring each other's deaths, two sisters lost two brothers double death in a single hour. This is not about that story anymore, or partially. This is the story of one of those sisters who suffered from the incident. This is the story of Antigone. Good morning, Antigone. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Good morning, Antigone. What are you watching? I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. I mean, I've just been thinking, that's all. What's the matter? I miss them. Antigone, they're in a better place right now. You're right, but I don't know. I still don't feel about what, what they did to Apollonesis. What's the matter? You don't know? I don't know what. Queen's having the police keep Apollonesis' body at the morgue. What about Edicles? That's the thing. Edicles has been already has preparations being made for it right now as we speak. They're going all out. Speeches. Recognizing his military accomplishments. Celebrating his competition. Contributions to the company, everything. Crean even has his picture frames on the wall in the company hallway. On the other hand, for Polynesis, Crean is against burning him or even giving him a funeral. He's just being tossed aside and disposed of like he's some street rat. He's just going to be left down there where his body will rot, decay, and in, in, out there with no one to mourn for him, no one to bring him flowers, no one to remember him. So he can be forgotten like everyone who, else who passed away eventually does. Well, there's something that we can do now. There, yes, there is. And what would that be? We're going to bury him. You're joking, right? Please tell me that you're joking. It's yeah? matey. I'm serious. Do you know that you would be putting yourself against if you get caught? Thieves is a million dollar corp corporation. You, and you know, and both you and I know that better than anyone else. He's not going to let Polynesia be buried, and you know that he will catch you eventually. It's matey. I'm not scared of Crayon. His little bit of power is nothing against me. If you're afraid, you don't need to help me. I'm doing this with or without you. Antigone, we're the only family we have left. Mom and Dad are gone, and now Eteocles and Polynesis are gone too. We have no one else. We just have each other. 
you still don't understand. It's not just about us anymore, it's bigger than that. Our family name used to mean something despite the fact that what started Thebes in the first place. No matter what he has to say on the subject of Polynesians to be worried or not is not his decision to make. I have to do what needs to be done. If something happens to me along the way, so be it. It's better than sitting around here doing nothing. Send them up. Welcome, Mr. Kyle. Thank you, Queen. Mr. Shiro, pleasure to be here. I called you two to come here today because, due to the fact you are men who will soon be working very closely beside me, I want to establish a mutual trust between us. I know you always spent your time with the company in a wise and professional manner, supporting both my late brother, Adipius, and his successor, Eocles, his son, during their times. So now that I'm the newfound CEO of this organization, I thought it would be only wise to try to set a similar footing between us, now rather than later. You might have your concerns about my plans for Thebes, what I want to do with the company, and if I'm best suited to continue leading the business to success. But I want to personally assure you that I only plan to build on the greatness the company has achieved so far. I have big plans on how many things will change right here. Like a great man once said, you can't determine a man's true character until he has had a chance to prove it through his actions. So I want to start off by going through a few of my key principles. As a leader, I know I need to be strong-minded, so given my prior experience with political affairs, I won't be hesitant to make harsh decisions when said decisions need to be made. Secondly, as important as it is to have access to third-party allies, I will make it a habit to take their assistance with a grain of salt as well, because even though having other people involved can be an advantage, in other cases it can be a weakness as well. What will you do with the bodies of the brothers? They've already been dealt with. I've seen to it that Eocles has had a proper burial and respects his time serving the company. You may have also seen his picture upon the wall, entering my office. His brother, Polynesius' body, on the contrary, remains at the morgue because he had the audacity to try to bring his family's business to ruins. Notwithstanding, he had an equitable reason for his actions and not people who go against their own governing laws to appease their own selfish needs should not be commended no matter who they are. Now that I have a chance to do something to assure that, I aim to take action. And with your help, I aim to show these what the definitive version of authority looks like. Well, your ideas sound practical to me, but you don't need to worry about our loyalty to you. We've been supporting these for so many years. We're only here to aid you in your efforts, Crayon. That sounds fun. Just make sure it stays that way. You all need to stay alert and know your place so we won't have any problems. Yeah, there shouldn't be any problems. We're here to give you advice, but leave the hands-on work to the professionals. I have people for that. However, you guys' jobs are to assist me. So if I ask more than you might expect at any given time, I expect it to be followed through. You're right, Creon. There shouldn't be a problem. No one would be so foolish enough to challenge you anyway. I know. Aren't you a fool? I haven't had a discussion with you before about interrupting my meetings. No, it's just that. I was going through my paperwork that you gave me. Then I got a call from the chief of police. I know. It's a damn point. The body from the morgue, it's gone. 